Hi everyone and welcome back to Sermon Sunday. We are on the last segment of the seven year tribulation, the last three and a half years. Stay tuned, you don't want to miss this. everyone great to see you and great to be back in doing another sermon sunday we are on sermon seven the last of the three and a half years of the seven year tribulation and boy do i have a lot to talk on this one i will try to make it as short as possible but i want you guys to understand what's going to happen in the last three and a half years when the devil shows himself to be the devil you know the antichrist i should say shows himself to be the devil and we got a lot to talk about before we go on though i'd like to say a prayer if you could bow your heads with me and then I would like if you would get your Bible, guys. I always say that. Please always have your Bible with you because let every man be a liar. You know, only God's word is the truth. So have your Bible ready with you. So if you don't mind, please bow your head. Uh, dear God, I come to you and I thank you again for another beautiful day. Thank you for waking me up. Thank you for keeping me safe along with all of my family, friends, and loved ones. And I just ask, Father, that you help me with this last sermon on the seven-year tribulation, explaining the last of the last and what is to come for the people that are left behind, Lord. Give me the right wisdom and words to speak to them, to bring many people to you, Lord, so that they themselves, too, can go to heaven when Jesus comes in the sky and gets his Christian people, that many, many more people can come to you, Lord. So guide me in this and help me with the last of this revelations that I've been teaching on. And thank you for all that you do in my life. I rebuke you, Satan, now in the name of Jesus. Get behind me where you belong. Thank you, Jesus, and I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, everyone. All right. Whew. I'm fired for this one. I am just blown away by all of this that I have learned and studied. In fact, I'm very sorry that I missed my Thursday slideshow and my um, video uh, which would have been yesterday because you guys get it, it'll be yesterday. I pre-record all these videos, so it's not yesterday for me, but um, it would have been yesterday for you guys. I'm sorry, but I do have a great recipe for next week for Thursday's slideshow and then, of course, Saturday for the um, Healthy Keto Eating Show. I've just been so busy studying all this stuff. I just wanted to get, you know, some good stuff out for you guys, for you guys to truly understand what tribulation is all about. I hope that you've enjoyed the, you know, the teachings I've done so far in Revelations. I started with the first of Jesus returning in the sky. He is not returning to earth. It is to, you know, in the sky. I'll be floating in the sky and we leave. And I read those verses of Matthew 24, I believe it was, all of 24. Then last week, I had talked to you guys about um, the middle part, you know, like what happens after that, like the devastation, but how the Antichrist will soothe you, make you believe he is Christ, everybody's going to follow him and everything. And then we get to the last three and a half years, and that's what we're going to go on today, which is devastation and very, very scary. Um, but it doesn't have to be scary. If you are a Christian, you have given your life to Christ, you believe that he died on the cross um, for your salvation, and you believe that, and you you know, have asked for, uh, you know, redemption, you've prayed to him, you've asked him to forgive you, and you try to live the best life you can, and you do believe, well, your name is written in the book, so you're going to float up with Jesus. We're not going to have to deal with any of this, but the people that are left behind will, and that's why I want to get this out. What good would I be if I didn't tell you guys this? Just like, again, if I knew the answer to uh, the COVID-19, and I never gave you guys, you know, the answer to it or the cure to it, what kind of person would I be? So I want to teach, and those of you who want to believe and who want to you know, really get their life right with Christ and don't want to be left behind, this is the video for you. And that's why I want to, you know, that's why I've been teaching these. So we're going to get on to that. But first, we're going to read Words of Jesus for Women. We are on, let's see here. Okay, we're on, don't be lazy. Keep watch because you do not know when the owner of the house will come back whether in the evening or at midnight or when the rooster crows or at dawn. If he comes suddenly, do not let him find you sleeping. Mark 13, 35 through 37. And we'll explain that. Don't get lazy. Don't justify your actions or lifestyle by saying, I'll live for Jesus later. Right now I want to have some fun. Jesus warns his followers to pay constant attention to how they are living because no one knows exactly when Jesus... Wow, I can't believe that this one came up when I'm doing revelations. That's a sign right there, you guys. How did this happen? 
How did this happen? You know, I random, you know, read these on the days that I read them. Right now I'm reading August 23rd. Um, my videos are so pre-recorded. And isn't that weird that I am reading on what I'm going to be reading on? Jesus is coming back to get us. Wow. Let me do that again. Don't get lazy. Don't justify your actions or lifestyle by saying, I'll live for Jesus later. Right now I want you to have some, right now I want to have some fun. Jesus warns his followers to pay constant attention to how they are living because no one knows exactly when Jesus will return to earth to bring his children to heaven. Make the most of the time you have here on earth, or I mean have here to be effective in your work for Jesus. Be careful to constantly live for him and be obedient to him. Then you will be ready whenever he comes. That is just, I mean, guys, guys, how can you tell me there isn't a God? How can you tell me there isn't a God? When here I'm reading this one and it's not even, you know, by the time you get this, the date's going to be way, you know, way farther away because I pre-record all these. Isn't that weird? I'm reading that. That is God. That is a sign from God. A sign from God saying, listen to what I am saying through angel. What I am saying through her speaking to you guys. I am coming soon. Be ready. Don't wait till later because you don't want to be left behind. Like I'm saying, later can be too late. It can be. And don't be lazy. I always say be productive with your life. Bring many people to Christ. Tell them about Christ. Live your life, you know, Christian. As a Christian, I mean, and live godly and holy and be ready because at any time he could return. And then it's done. You're left behind. And wait till you hear what I have to read to you guys of the last three and a half years. The bottom says, Dear Father, I know I sometimes get lazy about realizing that Jesus' return could happen at any moment. I ask you to fill me with the urgency of sharing the gospel with others because it could be any day. In Jesus' name, amen. And this is why I share this with you guys. I mean, come on. That is a sign right there that Jesus must be returning soon. If he's having me read this and all of a sudden the one I turn to for the date for August 23rd is right on what I'm talking about. This is, it's blowing me away. But I know there's a God. But that's why I'm saying if I'm wrong, you have nothing to lose. But if I'm right, you have everything to lose. And I am right. Right here was a sign. Right here was a sign. Unbelievable. Thank you, God, for that. I hope, God, that I can bring many to you through this. Wow. Doesn't that just blow your guys' mind? I mean, it blows my mind. But it really doesn't because that's how Jesus works. God knows exactly when somebody needs to hear something. So, all right, everybody, I hope you got your Bibles with you. We're going to open up here. I have kind of cleaned up this mess here. <laughs> all my studying and everything I've done. Like I said, I've just been so busy, and I just wanted this to be perfect for you guys. I wanted you to understand. So, all right. The last three and a half years, we're on Sermon 7. The last three and a half years of tribulation. Now, listen closely, you guys. The last three and a half years of the seven years of tribulation are what um, scholars are calling the Great Tribulation. Things are going to get real bad, very bad, you guys. Again, these are things that I wrote down notes for myself, and we're going to read some scripture. One, there's going to be bloody water that you can't drink. Let's turn to Revelations. Is this Revelations? Yeah, Revelations. Yeah, turn to Revelation 16, 3. And I have marked them here so that I can do this quicker for you guys. Okay, Revelations 16. I'm sorry, Revelation 16, 3 and 4. Okay, right? 3 through 4. And the second angel poured out his vial... Am I reading them in order here? Yeah. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of it, the dead. Wait, I'm sorry. And the second angel poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man, and every living soul died in the sea. Okay. And then it goes to four. And the third angel poured out his vial upon the rivers, and the fountains of water, and that they be, or and that they become blood. Right there, we're going to have bloody water. You won't be able to drink, you guys. That's just one part. Keep listening. One part. The second thing, it will it will have sun scorching people. Revelations sixteen eight. Turn to that. Well, we're right there already. 
8. And the fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. You will be scorched by the sun, you guys. The next, painful sores, Revelation 16, 2. And the, and the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and they fell on noisome and greasome sores. And, and uh, Sorry, I'll read it again. And the first went and poured out his vial upon the earth, and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshipped his image. You will, you know, have sores on your skin, you guys. It's going to be increasingly more difficult to be or say that you are a Christian during this last three and a half years of tribulation. Then when the seven years of tribulation is done, the next event is, well, before I go to that, I just want to say it will be because the Antichrist is going to make sure that anybody that tries to live for God or says they're a Christian, he's going to try to kill you. He's going to try to get you. So people are going to be scared of that. They're going to be very, very scared to be a Christian. It'll be horribly scary with all of this going on and then just knowing, you know, what, what is to come. And so it's going to be very, very hard to be a Christian. Very hard, you guys. That's why I'm saying be ready now. It's easy now to be a Christian. Don't let it be so hard that, you know, where God gives you this second chance in tribulation, it's almost impossible with an antichrist really walking this earth. Yes, we have antichrist now, but this is one being sent that people will truly believe is Christ. They're going to follow him and find out the last three and a half years of it that he is Satan. Okay, and that's when he is going to do everything to destroy you. Everything. Please, guys, get ready. Then when the seven years of tribulation is done, the next event is called the Battle of the Armageddon. Jesus and all of his armies, which include you and I, who made, um, who made it to heaven already, will totally and completely destroy Satan and his armies. After this, the Bible says, after this battle, Revelations 22, so please turn to 20, verse 2. And he said, hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. The devil will be bound for a thousand years. The next is what's called the millennium kingdom. This is the actual second coming of Jesus. And it will be a thousand year period whereby Jesus sets up a literal, literal, literal kingdom here on earth, and every Christian that's ever believed in Jesus Christ of all time will also rule and reign with Jesus Christ on earth. Go to Revelations 20, 5, and 7. But the rest of the dead lived not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. Blessed, is it through 6? Um, five through seven, I'm sorry. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison. Okay. Then it says here, or I wrote here, it will be a time characterized by righteousness, peace, no more wars. It'll have joy, holiness. This is all, you know, in that thousand years when Satan is bound, okay? And we're going to start with Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah. And we're going to read Isaiah 2, 4. And he shall judge among the nations and shall rebuke many people and they shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into, um, prun, I don't even know this word here, pruning, pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war anymore. And then read Isaiah 2. Oh, Isaiah, I'm sorry. Isaiah 5. Yeah, 520. 
Woe unto them that can that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. And then let's read 11, 6, and 8 of Isaiah. Okay, 6 through 8. The wolf and or the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion of the failing together or fathing fathing together, and a little child shall lead them, and the cow and the bear shall feed their young ones, shall he down shall he lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking, suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his head on the um, cockatrice den. These, these verses here we're talking about um, where the time will be characterized by righteousness, peace, no more wars, joy, during that thousand years of, you know, where the devil is bound, where we talked about the devil being bound. After that, the the war, the the Armageddon, I'm talking about, and it says, then we will have, okay, be, because Satan and all his demonic influence will be bound. That's why we will have all of this because he will be bound, like I just said. Then we have the judgments after the thousand years have ended. Satan and his whole demonic crew will be cast into the lake of fire. Then every single non-believer in the history of time will stand before God and what is called the great white throne judgment, and they will give an account for their sins. Then you see, then you see they will be cast into the lake of fire for eternity. Go back to Revelations 20. And we're going to read 13 and 14. And the sea gave up the dead, which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead, which were in them, and they were judged, every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. See, so guys, listen to this. If you're not a Christian, listen to this. It's your second death. I mean, come on, this is terrible, terrible stuff if you're not walking with God. Apart from, oh, wait, cast into the lake of fire for eternity. You know where I read that revelation? Then you will see that they will be cast into the lake of fire for eternity apart from God. And then the best and great news, God will create a new heaven and new earth. There are only four chapters in the Bible where there is a um, perfect environment. Genesis 1 and 2, make sure you read that. And Revelations 21 and 22, where there's an, a perfect environment. That's the only verses, four verses, Genesis 1 and 2, Revelations 21 and 22. You guys read that. And Genesis 3 is where the problem started. In Revelations 20, problems solved. That is the rapture and all of that. So what we see here is God's perfect, amazing story coming full circle, whereby God reestablishes the perfect environment that he intended at creation. And the reason for this is because earth is which we currently live in is not fit for eternity because it's decaying every day. So God is going to do away with it. Go to Revelations 21, 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more C. All right. And then he's going to burn it with, or he's, yeah, he's going to burn it with fire. Second Peter 3.10. Please turn to second Peter 3.10. Let's see here. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heaven shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So he's going to burn it up because our world is decaying every day. So he's got to burn it up. Um, he's got, he's got to build a, a new one. And then it says, then he's going to create a new heaven and a new earth where we can dwell with him throughout all 
eternity. Guys, listen, you don't want to be left behind. Listen to the things that are going to happen. You know, it wasn't a lot that I read there, but you don't need to read a lot. Scorching skin, sores, being burned up. By, I mean, burned up by the sun, sores you're going to get, bloody water, you won't have nothing to drink. You'll be drinking bloody water. You're going to be tried to be marked as the beast. They're going to try to do that. You will You try to be a Christian, but you'll be killed if you are. So that will be impossible. Everything will be taken away. Satan, like I said, the Antichrist will show himself, and it's not going to be pretty the last three and a half you know, years. Tribulation itself isn't going to be pretty, but it's not going to be good at the end, you guys. The chances of you making it in tribulation to heaven is one in probably, I don't even know. I don't know, but I know it's a lot. It will be very, very hard. Please, you guys, get right with God right now, right now. This was a sign right here that it fell on the day that I did this, this video, fell right on the day that I was reading this to you guys, right on the day. That's a sign right there that Jesus is saying, I'm coming. Listen to what I am speaking through angel. Listen. I am returning. Be ready. Be ready. Don't wait. Don't be lazy and say, I'll come to God later. I have time. Nobody has time. You need to come to God right now. You do not want to be in the tribulation, the seven-year tribulation, and definitely not the three and a half years. Do you know how hard it's going to be to live? You can't even have fresh water, and the sun is going to be scorching your skin, and you're going to have sores all over the place. That's what happens when you don't walk with God. Those are the things that happen to you when you don't believe and don't walk with God. And all the proof is right here, you guys. It's all here. And it could just bring tears to my eyes to know that there's many, many people out there that are lost. Lost souls that are going to serve this. If they don't die prior, if they die, they're going to hell. If they don't, they're going to do this tribulation and then they're going to hell. It's not... It's, it's very sad that we live in a world like that and that they are trying to take God away. They are trying so hard to take him away from this world, but it was all signs. It was all signs towards the end, and we're getting close to the end. We definitely are. These were all signs to the end. Pick up this book. Turn your life over to God. Believe. Read John 3.16. Read those verses I told you on Romans. I will link them again down in this box. I linked them last week. I'll link them again down in this one. In the last sermon, I linked them. I'll link them again. How to turn your life around and give your life to God and get that salvation. To know you have a place in heaven and will not have to serve tribulation. Or if you die before that, before Jesus returns. Well, not really returns, but is floating in the sky. I always say return. He's not returning. He's going to be up in the sky. He's not returning to earth. But he's going to be there to get us. If you die before that, you know, and you were ready and you turned your life around, well, then you're going to heaven. But if you weren't, you're going to hell, you guys. Hell, get right with him. Please get right with him. I hope that this, these segments that I read to you guys, that you got a lot out of it. Revelations, like I said, for many people is scary, but as us Christians, it doesn't have to be scary. Yeah, it's scary to think about our lost souls that are going to serve that, but we don't have to be scared. We get to leave. And when it's all over, we get to have a new heaven and a new earth, and we're going to walk a beautiful new earth without the devil anymore. He is then bound into the lake of fire, if I read that. I think I did. I'm not sure. But then he is cast into hell for eternity, forever and ever and ever, and can no longer hurt us anymore. Like he can now. He will not be able to do that anymore when we get our new heaven and our new earth. And we'll be walking this earth with Jesus, you guys. Be walking it with Jesus. So, and then we've I've also got our kingdom in heaven. We'll have a new heaven, new earth, all of that. Knowing that no more pain, no more sorrow, sorrow, no more hurt, no more hurting us because the devil can't do it anymore. He can't do it anymore. So there won't be any more wars or people fighting or anything like that. Nothing. Nobody will be against anybody. It's going to be a beautiful time, you guys. Get right with God. Get right with God right now. Start your day. Go through your day and end your day with this. Life's manual. The book that will get you to heaven if you believe. If you believe the word that's in here that God wrote, which is the truth. He doesn't lie to us. The truth is right in here. If you believe, you're going to heaven. you got a place in heaven. Read those verses I'm going to link down below and get yourself ready with God. Get on your knees the old-fashioned way and pray. Pray for all God's people. Pray for him to clean up our world right now, what's going on, and treasure each and every day that God gives you and pray to him. Thank him. You know, spend quality time alone with him and pray for all your enemies. Don't wish any bad upon anybody. That's not living a Christian life. Be the best that you can and be right with God and believe in John 3.16 along with the verses I'm going to put down below. 
that's giving your life to Christ. And you're going to live eternity in heaven and walk our new heaven and earth after that thousand years when Satan can no longer hurt us. So I hope you guys enjoyed these sermons. This one wasn't real long, but didn't have to be. Like I said, enough said with that. For the people that are lost, you have a lot to worry about, a lot. But those Christian people, we don't. So I love you guys very much. I will continue to pray for you, and I truly do. Like I said before, I put my hand on a Bible. I pray for all of you. I say by name if I know you, and if I don't, I say everybody that watches me and everybody that I watch. I pray for their safety, and I pray, of course, for my family, my friends, and my loved ones. And I would love it if you'd pray for me. Keep me in your prayers. And other than that, everybody take care. God bless, and I will see each and every one of you in my very next upload. Get right with God right now. He could return just like that, and it's too late if you're not right with him. See you, everybody. Have a great day. Have a great Sunday. I love you guys.